out a pad, a paper, take some notes, and we're going to, I have my slides not ready for you here. Here we go. Lord's Gym Ministry, P.O. Box 619048, Roseville, California, 95661. Write us. Let us know that you're watching. These programs are a blessing to you. Uh, and uh, those that financially support us, we thank you. God bless you. Uh, tonight, i got a great lesson for you. Hope, promises from God. And not more appropriate way to really call the Word of God. This is a book full of the promises of God. God God gives us promises, and he put it in a book, and it's really it's his covenant, his, his sworn oath and word to us. And throughout these scriptures are promises of hope that no matter what you're going through, what's happening in your life, things are going to change and get better for you. If you believe and you have the power of hope working in your life, hope, promises from God, glory to God. Let's read some scripture. Ezekiel, uh, or I'm sorry, Ezekiel, uh, Hebrews. Still thinking in times in Israel. Uh, Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is faith? A confidence assurance that something that we want is going to happen. It is certainty, a certainty of that which we hoping, a hope for is waiting for us, even though we can't see it ahead. Can't see it, but I know what's coming. Why? Because I got my hope is bound to, based on the word of God. I know it's going to come. Hope. Glory to God. Then we're going to get into some hope scriptures now. Uh, if you haven't made these part of your arsenal, you need to. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace and believing that you might abound by the power of the Holy Spirit. I like this in the Amplified Bible, my favorite version of this. May the God of our hope so fill you with joy and peace and believing through the experience of your faith that the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, get this, bubbling over with hope. Glory to God. Didn't that sound like a great way to live? Bubbling over with hope. Hallelujah. Well, what is hope? Simple definition. This is out of Vine's Expository Dictionary of Greek Words. Uh, hope is simply favorable and confident expectation. What's that? I know something good's getting ready to happen. The, the happy anticipation of good. I'm believing, of course, I mean, I guess you could have uh, an anticipation of something bad happening to somebody, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about a positive hope, a hope that's based on the Word of God and the power of God. That hope, a favorable, confident expectation, the happy anticipation of good, to anticipate expectation or confidence. That, and that's just powerful. Get that in you. Do you live your life that way? Uh I'm always uh, anticipating, expecting, have my faith out and believing for lots of things. Uh, ultimately, being in heaven with the Lord. That's our great hope. That's what the Bible calls our great hope. Uh, but this, this uh, lifestyle of hoping, and, I, and I'm not, again, not dimin diminishing the principles of faith at all, but you can't have faith unless you have hope. If you're not bubbling over with hope, if you're not anticipating with good, uh, with a, a, anticipation of good, good things coming your way, uh, you'll never have faith. Faith, it, that's the foundation of faith, is that hopeful, anticipating, expectant attitude that you add to the word, add the word of God to and speak it out of your mouth and believe it. And now that becomes the faith of God in your life. Well, let's start with hope. Let's get hope. What is hope? Oh my goodness, so many different scriptures on hope. Uh, hope is the anchor for your soul. Uh, hope is the anchor for your soul. What soul? That's your emotions. Your mind, will, emotions. Uh, it keeps your, your emotions anchored. Uh, the hope we have is the anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Well, that, that hope keeps me solid. That that hope keeps me planted, keeps me from drifting off. That anchor uh, is, is in, and the anchor has to be anchored in the Word of God. I'm anchored in the Word of God. And, and because of that, I will not drift away. So have hope as an anchor. That anchor to your soul, firm and secure. Uh, an anchor to your emotions. Uh, most of the time, the reason that we miss out on what we're believing for and uh, not 
uh, really getting the things that we're believing for is because our anchor came loose. We weren't anchored. We, we believed, we said something, we confessed it, we believed it, and then we let it drift. Well, have hope as an anchor that keeps your soul firm and secure. Notice what Hebrews 6, 19 uh, in the Amplified. Now we have this hope, steadfast, the anchor of the soul. It cannot slip, cannot break down under whatever steps uh, out upon it. A hope that reaches further and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. Ah, oh, glory to God. I, I believe that when we pray and, and, and we begin to meditate on the things of God, that we go into the Holy of Holies beyond the veil. Amen. Well, Message Bible says, it's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances, right into the very presence of God. Oh, God, what a way to live in the hope, the hope the Holy Spirit is with me, the hope that God is leading, guiding, directing my path, the hope that if I come boldly to the throne room of God, that he's going to, uh, I have an audience with him. He's going to hear me. I have that confidence. And so uh, that hope brings us into the presence of God. That bubbling over expectation. When I pray, God's with me. When I pray, my prayers are heard in heaven. Amen? Well, why do you need an anchor? Well, because your soul will drift. Your, your emotions will, will get wacky on you. But when it's anchored, it doesn't matter what your emotions are saying. No, you take it right back to the word of God and say, no, this is what we're believing. This is what's going to happen. Amen. Hebrews 2.1 Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that you have heard, at least at any time we should let them, what? Slip. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard, at least we drift away. There's the warning from the scripture. We, we can drift. We can let our anger come loose, right? Uh, since... All this is true. We ought to pay attention closer than ever to the truths that you've heard. At least any way we we'll drift past them and slip away. So we must learn carefully of the truths that we have heard or we'll drift away from them. It's crucial that you keep a firm grip on what you've heard so you don't drift off. Amen. Uh, somebody said, well, I've, I've heard these scriptures and I've heard this teaching on hope. You need to hear it again. That's what this is talking about. No, we need to have our, our soul anchored in the word of God, anchored in the promises of God, anchored and bubbling over with anticipation, expectation that bubbles up and comes out of our mouth, that everybody around us knows that we're hopeful people. We're always speaking of brighter days, better things coming, uh, always believing for healing, always believing for an answer to prayer. Why? We're bubbling over with hope. Amen? Isn't that a great way to live? I think so. Well, here's something else about hope. You can talk yourself into hope. That's good, isn't it? You can talk yourself into hope. Notice what the psalmist said. David said, uh, and excuse me while I go to full screen here just for a minute. I want you to get this down. But why are you cast down, O oh, my soul? This is the psalmist talking to himself. It's kind of like standing in front of a mirror. Maybe he was standing in front of his reflection in the water. And he is talking to himself. He said, why are you downcast, soul? Why are you upset? Why are you disquieted within me? And then he tells his soul what to do. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Amplified. It says, uh, Why are you cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God. Wait expectantly for him. And I shall yet praise him. Who is the help of my sad countenance and my God? Amen. Well, here's another translation. Why uh, am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I'll put my hope in God. I'll praise him again. My Savior, my God. Amen. I like that. Here's my favorite in the Message Bible. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God and soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He is my God. Amen. Well, number two, God's good, so everything's going to be all right. That's my hope. That's the confession of my hope. That's my hope uh, in writing right there. This is what I believe. God is good. So, because God's good, everything's going to be all right. No matter what I'm going through, whatever's happening in your life, everything's going to be cool. Why? Because God's on my side, and he's good. God's not mad at me. 
God's not mad at you. He's not mean. Uh, he's not abusive. <laughs> Maybe you had an abusive parent or, or something. God's not an abusive parent. God won't beat you up. He won't whip you. No, he's just trying to get good things into your life. No matter what's going on in your life, he's just trying to bless you and help you. Amen. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endure to all generations. You got that? Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For what? He is good. And his mercy endures forever. Psalms 34, 8. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Psalms 107, 8 and 9. Oh, that the man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. Luke 12, 23. Do not fear, little flock, Jesus said. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Amen. God wants to get it to you. God's not trying to keep anything from us. He's trying to get everything that he's promised in his word to us, manifested in and through us, and uh, finally till we arrive in heaven and, and live with him forever. So uh, don't fear. Don't worry. Uh, give thanks. Uh, give praise. God's good. God's a good God. And he's good all the time. Amen. I think that's the next point. Uh, if we then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things unto him that ask? Well, I know how I am as a father. I want to bless all my kids. I want to always give them good things. Bless them any way that I can. Well, wherever my deficiencies are, my father is a whole lot better. And my father is, uh, he just an enabler. He just wants to bless you. He wants to pour his blessings on you. He wants to give good gifts to his children. How bad, uh, as bad as we are, is another translation. Uh, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more then will your Father in heaven give good things to those that ask him? Amen. Well, number three, God's good all the time. And here's another statement. I know you probably have heard this, but all the time he's good. This is a biblical theological statement. God is good. You just get that down. God is good all the time. And all the time, no matter where, uh, no matter when, no matter what happens in your life, God is good. He's not the one doing bad. He's not trying to bring evil into your life, sickness, car accidents, uh, uh, messed up relationships. That's all the work of the enemy. No, God's wanting to give good gifts, perfect gifts, blessings. Amen. Notice what James said. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights, in whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. Uh, Amplified says it this way. Every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of, of all that gives light. It's shining, uh, the shining of whom there can be no variation, rising or setting, or shadow cast by the turning as in an eclipse. Now, let me, uh, me, do I got another, no, here, let's go back. Uh, let me explain this. Uh, uh, James is talking about a sundial. And uh, there in the sundial, God is at high noon. In the sundial, there's only one time that there's no shadow or no variation. It's when the sun is at full, uh, high, at, uh, at, at full moon, right? Uh, when sh the sun is at full power, and it's shining straight down on that sundial. And then there's no shadow. That's God. God is always good. God is always at full power, full strength, full love, full wanting blessings for your life. And there's no variation or shadow of turning in him. Uh, variation, in other words, he's not good one day, bad the next day, mediocre the next day. No, God's just always good. He's always in a good mood. He's always... Uh, in a good disposition. He is always wanting to bless and help you. And, and if you want to find God in a bad mood, read the book of Revelation. And I don't think he's in a bad mood then. He's just finally bringing judgment to where judgment is deserved and renovating and creating a new heaven and a new earth. So good things are on the way. God is good. And he's always good. Don't forget that. Live, live that. Get that in your spirit. 
Get that in your heart. Amen. Uh, number four, uh, when we hope in God, we will not be disappointed. Did you get that? You can't be disappointed when you hope in God. If you hope in God, you say, well, I know somebody, they put their hope in God. They believe that they would be healed of a sickness or disease. And instead, as they were hoping in God, they died. Well, do you know that they're not mad and they're not disappointed? Hope, that biblical hope cannot be disappointed. They didn't go to heaven and go, hey, I went out of here. This, this is crazy. Get me out. No, they were blessed. They, were, they, they entered into the thing that they had always hoped for. When we hope in God and we believe God for whatever you're believing God, at the end result of it, hope can't be disappointed. Uh, you're going to be blessed. Uh, and we know not only that, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint what God said he's going to do. Amen. Uh, Romans 5, 3. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know they're good for us. They help us learn to be patient, consistent. Keep on trusting in God. Keep on praising Him. Stay with the Word. Stay with the confession of faith. Don't back down. That's true uh, patience, consistency. And that consistency, that patience develops strength of character in us. And helps us trust God more each time. And we use it until finally our hope and our faith are strong and steady. And then when that happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us. Isn't that good? Well, again, I've got to go with full screen just so you, for this hope. See this at the bottom? This hope will not lead to disappointment. And again, people say, well, I know people, they, they tried that faith stuff and, and they didn't work and they were so disappointed and they got discouraged. Well, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't walk in the faith that we're talking about. They didn't walk in the scripture. They didn't walk in the hope of God, not in the full counsel of God. You can't be disappointed. When, when your hope is set in God, uh, it always is fulfilled. It's always, it, things are going to be all right. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, another scripture, uh, no, a, a saying here. Let me go back. Of all the forces that make for a better world, none is so indispensable. None is so powerful as hope. Without hope, men are only half alive. I believe that. How about you? You believe that? I do. I believe we're only half alive without the hope of God. Well, here's another one. I want you to get this one. Without hope, your heart gets sick. Uh, and, and so if tonight you're listening to this, Maybe you've been believing for healing. And instead, your symptoms have got worse. The doctor has given you a bleak outcome and, and, a, and a prognosis. Well, I want you to know that when your hope gets fizzled out, your heart gets sick. And when you have no hope of living, when you have no hope of being healed or recovery or no hope of happy days again, your heart becomes very hard and your heart gets sick. The Bible is very clear about that. And that word sick means to be rubbed or worn down. Uh, that continual disappointment, the continual things not working out, uh, it just keeps coming. Well, that will rub or wear you out. It'll wear your hope out. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. That is when uh, desire comes, it's a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. When dreams come true at last, there's life and joy. Message Bible, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn life around. All it takes is just one good thing to happen. Turn it around and you're back on top again. Glory to God. Just keep on hoping in God. Don't get disappointed. Don't get discouraged. Don't let your heart get sick. And if you're listening tonight and you're not believing for things, Maybe at one time you believed for something. Maybe it was a spouse. Maybe it was uh, for your children. Maybe it was for your grandchildren. Maybe it was for your own life. And, and, and you just got disappointed. And, and now your heart's sick. It's, it's, it's rubbed down. It's worn down. It's weak. Well, get it built back up in the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Get your hope up by speaking those things out, by, by writing things out. This is what I 
desire to see. When, when that hope begins to spring alive in you, it's a tree of life, the Bible says. Uh, another translation said, hope defers makes your heart sick. Dreams come true. There's life and joy. Unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. I love that. One, one, one moment. This next week could be your turnaround week. Well, why don't you get your hope up in it? To start believing God. Amen. Uh, where hope is gone, defeat prevails. It's also been said, there's no medicine like hope. No incentive so great, no tonic so powerful as expectation of something better tomorrow. Now, just take a minute and, and get that quote, I hope. Get, get this one in you. There is no medicine like hope. No incentive so great, no tonic so powerful as expectation of something better tomorrow. Get expectation. Start changing your, your outlook. Change your confession. Change what you're saying. There are no hopeless situations. There are only men and women who have grown hopeless about them. I hope that's not you. But if it is, I'm here tonight to reignite your hope. Get your hope back up. Well, number six. Uh, the desires of your heart are, uh, uh, are will kindle uh, in, your, in the fire for God. Now, let me see. Uh, I, I wrote this out actually with uh, out singular, once compound, one singular. Okay, so uh, the desire of your heart is kindled in the fire for God. The desires of your heart are kindled in the fire for God. Anyway, <laughs> my own personal thing. I just went over that about five times before I went on the air trying to get that right. And it just depends on if you take the S off the desire. Anyway, and if it's not right, don't don't tell me about it. I don't need any English lessons. It's too late. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Be happy about God. Uh, it actually, it says, seek your happiness in the Lord in one translation, and he'll give you your heart's desire. Uh, stay full of, of just bubbling about God, uh, happy about God. Those desires of your life are kindled in the fire of God. Uh, the word, uh, I got this from uh, Bill Johnson, but the word uh, desire comes from a compound word, and it means uh desired or desires are things that come from the sire uh, in, uh, in in our birth into others right so desires where who is the sire of our desire father our father has put these desires in us and uh, I, I again you go look that up in the Hebrew uh, uh, tear it up and see if you can discover some of that but I believe this teaching, I, I, I believe that God wants to cause something to be birthed in your heart for his purpose, his cause, and for your purpose in life. And, and as you delight yourself in the Lord, those desires are kindled in that fire and they begin to come alive and, and come forth. Praise the Lord. God wants you to uh, live the desires of your heart, uh, but he wants to be the one that sires the desires. Does that make sense? He wants to put the desires in you. And so as you delight yourself in the Lord, those desires will become from him. Amen. So like I said, well, I always, I got a, a feeling of, of a desire to serve the Lord and go preach the gospel. Well, that's from the Lord. Amen. That's from him. Amen. Uh, something else bubbles up and it's of the flesh. You, you know the difference. Let God, and again, you, uh, as we said in the, the, the last statement, that desire is kindled when you're in the fire of God. In, in the blessing of God, in the worship of God. Amen. Number seven. Here's another good one. Keep confessing your hope in God. Um, I could stay here the rest of the night, but uh, w w if you're going to lose the battle, you're going to lose it in your confession. The Bible said, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful uh, who promised, or he who promised is faithful. Hold fast to the confession of your hope. The word confession, uh, or in the King James, it says profession. Uh, that's a compound Greek word that is uh, homologia. We know what homo means. It means the same as. Well, logia, the word. So to hold fast speaking the same as the word of God, that's how we keep our hope strong. That's how we keep our life strong. Uh, 
you know, holding fast to those professions, the confession of the word of God about concerning our hope or the things that we hope for without wavering. Why? Because we know that God has, that has promised it. He is faithful to it. Amen. When you say that a situation or a person is hopeless, you're slamming the door in the face of God. That's a good quote. Uh, while there is life, there is hope. Uh, you're going to make it. Everything's going to be all right. Number eight. Amen. I hope you're getting something out of this. I'm getting myself fired up. Number eight. Your past doesn't determine the hope for your future. Your past doesn't determine your hope for the future. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope and future. God's got something good for you. He didn't have anything bad. You know, the only thing uh, that is planned for you bad in your future is from the devil. And uh, God can uh, cause you to uh, miss that and, and not have that come on you. Hoping God, uh, his hope is, is good. It's, it's a future and a hope. Good things are coming your way. Uh, another translation says, plans to bring you a future you hope for. God wants to, he has plans to prosper you. Not disaster. Uh, plans to bring you the future you have hoped for. Amen. Of all the delusions, perhaps none is so great as the thought that our past has ruined our present. That the evils we've done the mistakes we've committed have made all future hope impossible. Well, Archbishop Goodyear, that is a Goodyear statement. I, I'm telling you, uh, that that's one that you might need to write down, put it on pause, and, and put it on a three by five card, put it up on your mirror, your refrigerator, and just confess that. But here's another one to go with it because Sandy Patty got this one right. As we journey through our life, the thing that uh, that we long for is hope. There is no greater source of hope than God's word. <laughs> you stay in God's word, it's just everything is going to be all right. Uh, God's got the plan. He's got our future. It's, it's all going to be good. Amen. Number uh, nine, our last point. And uh, as we close tonight, uh, hope is one of the big three for miracles. Now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, the greatest of these is love. And so hope, faith, hope, love, abiding faith, conviction, and belief, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectation. Amen. This is faith, hope, and love. You can't make it in life without them. They're the big three. And if you take one out, you, it, the, other, the others are all uh, conditional upon it. We need it all. Faith, hope, and love. Amen. And, and, and notice again, hope is right there. Uh, many times people in endeavoring, trying to teach faith, had uh, kind of bad mouth hope. Well, you don't bad mouth hope. You've got to have hope. Filled with hope. Be, be filled with hope. Uh, write down big dreams. Write down goals and all the other stuff. Hope is a wonderful thing. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and, and again, as you're in the Word of God, it, those things you hope for get narrowed down and you begin to realize maybe it, it'd be more like this way. I, I should hope this way because God's Word begins to refine that hope. Amen. And then uh, that foundation of hope, faith is the, the substance of things you've hoped for. Now I've got, I've got hope. I'm hoping for that job. I'm hoping for that spouse. I'm hoping for those relationships to be healed. I, I've got my hope out. Now I attach the word of God to it and, and I begin to speak it out of my mouth. Those things that I'm starting to believe because of the word of God. And now I speak those out of my mouth. That be, becomes the trigger of faith. And, and faith, faith wins the victory. Amen. These three, hope, faith, love. Amen. Well, as we close tonight, one more quote for you. There are no hopeless situations. There are only men and women who have grown hopeless about them. I don't know what you're going through tonight, but there's no hopeless situations. Uh, you might have got to a place that you've grown hopeless about it, but it's not hopeless. Put your faith back in God. Trust in Him. Be blessed. Amen. Uh, quit letting the devil rip you off.
So I hope you got something out of this tonight. Uh, I'm going to close with a closing prayer. And uh, again, if you're not going to church anywhere, come see us. We meet every Sunday on Vernon Street in Roseville, 105 Vernon Street, Randy Peters Event Center. Come in and see us. We start at 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 to 10.30 is prayer. And then we start our service at 10.30. But come to prayer because that's what we get all fired up and revved up. Amen. Come on. We'd love to see you. Well, God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, I love you. I love your word. And I thank you, Lord. Your word works. Father, I pray for all those that would listen tonight or maybe uh, YouTube or Facebook. Lord, I pray this word will come alive in their heart where the devil has crushed their dreams, taken their hope. Father, I pray for a restoration of the hope of God, bubbling over with hope, writing down dreams and visions, talking about great things that are coming their way, and watch what you will do. Father, we pray a blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and uh, stay in touch. Send us a letter. Send us a note. Tell us how you're doing. Amen. Lord's Gym Ministries, P.O. Box 619-048. Amen. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.